Yeah, let's get this thing off. Now one thing you notice, there's no brakes on this side. All the quads in the rear, unless they're like 1000 cc, they only have uh, one disc brake on, uh, on one side. Even though this is independent axle, it's not a straight axle, which is much better. You don't want a quad with a straight axle because then the whole thing pivots like that. This is since 2005, this is first year with the uh, independent suspension on these uh, Yamahas, which was a major upgrade. So on this side you got the same thing, you got this, the nut has got a little thing that bends in the groove, and that prevents this nut from spinning free. So you gotta bend that open. Just like on the other side. You gotta take a center punch and just go in there. And just spread it open. Just enough to shove this thing in there. Let me show you, see? Now it's open. Now we can uh, take 27 millimeter and spin this off. Come on, get in there. The biggest problem with this job, if you don't have an impact, you can do a lot of damage because there's no brake on this side to stop the wheel. And if you grab a long bar, you're putting a lot of torsion on the CV joints and the whole differential there. You know, try to break this loose because this thing is tight. I mean, it is tight. So having an impact, you don't put any, because the impact is actually doing the knocking forces. It doesn't, doesn't torque this whole thing. So. Unfortunately for this job, I think you need an impact. off that was a lot of crud in there not rust just kind of I don't know what it is some kind of white deposit okay so again we gotta remove these two bolts you probably can't see the lower one but it's the same one as the upper one and it's the uh, it's 17 and 14 so you just have to hold it on one side and spin this off come on get on there pull the bolts out they should just come out by hand and now this whole thing can come out now you can't pull on it because you'll pull separate somewhere here do the damage to the axle so now you have to knock this shaft here the axle the drive shaft out that way so just do this hopefully the camera was showing where I was knocking, but that's it. There's your little knuckle. So now let's go to the vise. Again, we gotta remove the snap ring here. Let's just squeeze and pull, basically. One side's out, then you just grab it with the pliers, and it'll come out. You just have to pull kind of in and twist. And again, I just use a socket, so any socket will work that fits in here to drive this thing out. Now I'll do it on a solid ground. Okay, so I'll just clean it up, put some penetrating oil, 
And if you notice, you got about a quarter of an inch space here. So you can put this flat against the, put it on the floor or on something metal like a vise here. And the whole idea is to break it loose. Once you get the bearing moving, it'll come out. But the first, you know, ten thousandths of an inch, the first movement, you want something solid. And then basically you can rig up all different type things to keep this thing up in the air or put in the vise, whatever, you know, whatever works. But first you want to put it on something solid to break it loose. All right. I said it's about 200 degrees or so, just enough to help you. So you want to be on a solid ground for first quarter of an inch because you actually have room in here. So I'm almost done. Just to break it loose. Okay, now I'm flush. So now I gotta support it. I'll finish the rest in the vise. That's it, it's out. There's your bore. You can see the penetrating oil actually went pretty deep, which is good. It helps you. Here's the old bearing. Now this is the other side since I uh, I did the other side already. Okay, here's the uh, here's the uh, second all these stickers second bearing. Uh, this up. Yep, nice and clean, smooth. See how easy it goes in? It's because I warmed up the housing. Why pound on it and break something when you can use physics? I'm supporting it underneath with just uh, something round so I don't put any uh, any strain on these on these arms here. Once you get this sound, you know this sound, it's solid. That means it's all the way in. So again, I took the uh, old bearing and removed the inner braces out. So I just all I have is just a shell. And then I ground the outside all the way around to make it smaller. So then when I'm when I'm pushing the new bearing in, this one moves goes in very easy. You know, I don't get, if I use the other side, I'm gonna end up pressing it in while I try to drive the uh, new bearing in. So that's why you grind the outside a little bit. And again, you can only hit on the outside of the new bearing. Don't hit it on the inside because you'll ruin it. So let me put the snap ring back in and all grease everything and assemble it. Just cleaning some of this mud so I can grease these bushings here. Oh, get in there. Alright, we'll pump it till you get grease oozing out. And then and that's it. Now you do the other side. Same thing. Alright. Got a bunch of grease coming out. Don't be shy here. Plenty of grease. All right, now it's ready for installation. Okay, before you install everything back, make sure the CV axles are nice and tight. There's no play or no grinding. The boots are all in nice condition, no tears, because then the grease comes out and kills the uh, CV axle. And uh, also there's a little sway bar here. 
And now uh, make sure that this thing is nice and smooth, doesn't have any play. It's a little sway, by, sway bar link. Let me show you. Show you how nice this quad looks. I mean, it's dirty. I, I've never cleaned it, but there's absolutely no rust anywhere. Just want to clean up the splines because there's a bunch of gunk in them. Grease them and put this new knuckle back on. Now the uh, axles in the back don't have any seals or o-rings or anything so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, Alright so let's grease this thing up. The splines still. Make sure you don't get any new corrosion. Like I said, nothing here is corroded, really. Everything is nice and shiny. I don't think there's a... Yeah, there's no top or bottom. It doesn't matter which way you install it. Since this doesn't have any brakes on. On the knuckle. So you can put it any way you want it. Get in there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Low spoiler caps. Alright. Grease everything. Okay, so you want to clean these splines inside here. Really nice and nice and shiny with a little brush like that, and then grease it. Just makes the installation much easier, and then if you ever have to remove it, it's never rusty. Okay, you want to make sure you grease everything really nice so this thing doesn't rust ever again. Doesn't matter orientation, it should just go right in. See, much easier than I couldn't take this thing off. I'm gonna just tap it in. Actually, you can use a nut here and just tighten it. Let me clean the uh, clean the nut, and then uh, we'll tighten it. And we'll just spin it on. Now this has to be pretty tight. Where's my uh, Where's my rag? Uh, A little more. Perfect. Same spot as it was before. Now we'll just bend that in. All right. See, it's all in the same spot as it was. So now I'm just gonna put the wheel back on and then move to the front. Oh, by the way, this quad has some uh, high-performance exhaust system previous owner put this on I don't know why I couldn't care less but but it's here and I have this little uh, silencer so it's not so loud 